paranormal. Imagine a bitter cold day in World War One. There's bloody conflict and pitiless tensions raging throughout the entire world. Soldiers are separated from families and forced to serve on national borders, satisfied political outcomes and nationalism. And, you, and then some men dreamt of angels hovering down the sky to save mankind, while they fetch fell tales of camelistic ghouls and ruthless demons. But the most famous of one of all, or so is said, is the Hound of Moons. During the First World War One, heavily outnumbered British troops sent out to corner German soldiers at the Battle of Moons during the 22nd to 23rd of August 1914. A tedious follow- followed. Germans are thrown back, British soldiers sustained fatal wounds. It was in this difficult turn of events. Everyone was looking for a ray of hope. Perhaps even a miracle. On April 24th, 1915, the British Spiritualist Magazine produced a column detailing the strange events that took place during the Battle of Mons, with several angels descended from the heavens, bows in their hands. Bows in their hands defend the British Army. Many claims are certified with varying details. The story became such an inspiration to the Nazis that any claims of being false were taken as treason. Leaders seemed to be deliberately spreading the legend and served sermons to inspire the wearied soldiers. But here is a different story. Fascinating Chronicle was published in 1919 by Brit- Canadian veteran F.J. Newhouse. Describe his story as a gigantic outworldly hound that mauled over British soldiers in no man's land. Publishing claimed that this hound wasn't any, your typical hellhound or phantom, but intentional creation of a horrific German experiment. According to Newhouse, Dr. Gubert Hatshut Miller, G U T T L I E B H O C H M U L L E R, have been performing an array of experiments to develop a powerful weapon which may help to sway the war in favour of Germany. He went from one asylum to another and finally found a man who got mad, hatred for England. He directed the brain out of the man man with consent of the German government and assisted, inserted it in the skull of a Siberian wolfhound. When the bad man died, the dog was attending, nursing, grew powerful and notorious. Once ready, he was set free to hunt down British soldiers on the battlefield of Mons. Is there any truth to this? The days of nightmares began on November 14th, 1914, when Captain Yerkes, Y-E-S-K-E-S, four associates from London for his years, went to patrol the no man's land. They never returned. On many days, their cadavers were discovered, the teeth marks on their throats. Nights later, patrolling, penetrating how was heard from the darkness. From then on, more and more soldiers would die in no man's land. They each had the same kind of imprints in their throats. It, every now and then the howl was heard and sentries dreading notice a big grey brute tread the grounds of no man's land after the howl disappeared and never to be seen again. At the time civilians were suspicious of the story. After all it seems to be something right out of the Edgar Allan Poe. Newhouse claimed that the certain secret papers released in the Hulman Hodgman's house had proved the legend. Unfortunately, I can't prove if it's right. I can't prove it's wrong. Do you believe it's right? Uh, and that is up to you to decide. That is.
Tales of the Paranormal, The Hound of Mons.